All right, everybody, hello and welcome to my training series. This is Josh Zwagel, CEO and founder of My Daily Choice. Uh, if you're just joining us, say hello in the chat, throw us a message or a comment, let us know who you are, what state or uh, what country you're, you're tuning in from today. And then we're gonna go ahead and get started here in just a minute. So, hey, everybody. Thanks for joining us. This is going to be um, this is going to be a really cool webinar. We're going to talk about uh, tap rooting. So um, hopefully you guys are ready for uh, ready for tap rooting. All right. Give me just one sec. I'm going to take a look at. I guess you guys can't chat <laughs> on this on this particular webinar. Let me see how I can fix that. Give me one sec here. Give me one sec and then we're gonna go ahead and get started. Oh, I guess I can't, I guess I can't edit it while I'm, <laughs> while we're on. It's okay, we'll, um, we're gonna get started here in just a minute. I see there's a lot of people joining. Um, I recognize some of the names. So thank you guys for tuning in. I'm not gonna try to fix the chat right now because I don't want to mess up the webinar. But um, if you guys have followed my uh, training sessions, the first week we talked about um, uh, the 10 and 2 uh, strategy that we have. That's basically bringing in uh, 10 customers, two affiliates, you know, putting, putting money in your pocket immediately, but also teaching that to your team. We also talked about mindset and mentality on the first training session. So I highly recommend watching that uh, training video, it's in your back office. The second week, um, we talked about uh, recruiting. So we talked about using a three-step system, learning how to peak interest, learning how to get people to take a look, get them to the presentation. There were some really great um, tips and tricks on prospecting in, in that training. And then um, last week, we talked about leveraging the tools, um, which is a great video because at My Daily Choice, there's so many tools and systems and, and things that are available in the back office that in, in most companies, you just don't have access to. So being able to um, you know, have that information where you learn how to create a shareable cart, you know how to use capture pages, you know how to use a replicate a website. Um, that was a, a very successful training. There's some leaders that have never heard that information before, and um, they're absolutely crushing it in their business after watching those three uh, training videos. And I believe, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say it slowly. I believe that this training video could be one of the most important training videos to your business. And so I ask that you get this out to as many people as possible in your organization because tap rooting is one of the most overlooked skills. In network marketing it's it's not just a skill uh it's a strategy it's a skill and a strategy if you learn how to become really great at tap rooting it can do amazing things for your business so in this training I, like maybe you've never heard of tap rooting before maybe this is something you've never done you've never heard of it um it's just not on the forefront of your mind i'm going to teach you how to go from average to savage because this is like tap rooting is like a savage thing to do. And it's something that can create massive duplication in your business. It's something that can uh, 10x your team. It can change, it can change your, it can change the dynamics of your business. It can create a fire, it can create momentum, um, and it can it can create like a special energy in your organization. And I'm going to teach you exactly what it is, how to do it. Um, different tips that um, have worked for many leaders uh, in network marketing. And so let's uh, kind of start from the basics. And so there's something that I learned in network marketing, which was really simple. It, it's this, you can't control what other people do in the business and you can't control how good they are, right? Like that's something that's, that's out of our control. Um, but what you can control is what you do and you can control how good you are. And so I hear like leaders all the time, like, 
you know, my team's not motivated, my team's not duplicating, you know, I don't have retention in my business, like, how do I keep my team motivated? And the answer is, you need to learn how to taproot, because that will unlock so many things for you in your team, compared to probably all of the other things you're doing that are not working. And so, like, what is taprooting? Taprooting is basically when you spend a significant amount of your time and your energy building relationships and prospecting with leaders that are very deep in your organization. So it's basically like, if you think of it this way, if you have a team in, in My Daily Choice, like you came into My Daily Choice, you started building and you have a team, you want to tap into the networks of your downline. And a lot of people, not just in My Daily Choice, but in the industry, only work with their level one and their level two. That's like most people in the industry. And it could be, it doesn't matter if it's somebody that's earning a lot of money in network marketing or in My Daily Choice. That's how a lot of people operate. They work with their level one, they work with their level two, and they kind of fall in this trap of being a, like being a manager. Like you're totally in management mode because you're only working with a small select few of people that are very close to you in your organization. You're not going deep into your organization and finding where the pockets of growth are, the pockets of activity, new blood, new momentum. You're not doing any of that. You're only focused on your level one and your level two. And so in my opinion, that is a trap, okay? If you heard it anywhere, you heard it here first, that's a trap because like, and I know people like, in, in network marketing, there's this like weird thing where it's like, yeah, but Josh, like I don't get paid as much uh, for somebody on my level, you know, seven than I do somebody my level one. So of course I'm going to work, you know, more with the person on level one than level seven or level five. And, and what you have to realize is yes, that may be true. You'll make more money off of somebody that's on your level one, but you're going to, you're going to find your best people deep down in your organization. And we're going to talk about how that works and what are some of the benefits of learning, you know, how to tap root. Um, but do not fall into the trap of only like mentoring and leading like your level one or your level two, because you're not going to know what's going on in your business. You're not going to know what's going on in your team. And, th and th that is a critical insight that you need. And it's one of the best ways to create a fire and, and create momentum. And I know for a fact, because I'm the CEO, I'm the owner, I, you know, I talk to all the leaders. I know for a fact that there are top leaders in the company who have never met people deep down in their organizations. And to me, that's crazy. I, that's not how I was taught. That's not how I learned. That's not how you build. You have to know the people deep down in your organization. And so if you're taking notes, write this down because this is something that I learned that really changed, it really changed the way that I thought about network marketing, building my team, um, how to grow. And so write this down. I'll say it a couple of times. The most valuable asset to your business Okay. The most valuable asset to your business is the people that your team knows. Okay. The most valuable asset to your business is the people that your team knows who have not yet been introduced to the business. The most valuable asset to your business is the people that your team knows who have not yet been introduced to the business. So, like, so what does that mean? That means that the most amount of money that you could make in my daily choice could be from the people that your team is connected to that they haven't introduced yet to my daily choice. And so there's, there's a difference between uh, driving depth versus driving width. And I'm going to talk about the difference because I feel like most people just don't know, like, what's the difference? Like, what does it mean driving depth versus width? And so so here's, um, here's the breakdown. When you're driving width in an organization, that means you're personally sponsoring a lot of people. Basically, there's a unilevel. And so every time 
um, you sponsor uh, a new person, it creates a new leg. So that means that the more people you sponsor, the wider your unit level is, the wider your team is. And so a lot of people in the beginning are driving with because their goal is to personally sponsor, you know, a lot of people. But as you become a, a leader in network marketing, you really want to drive depth. That's when you're you're taking you're taking your team and you're seeing how far down you can you can drive your organization versus just going wide. And so let's uh, let's give an example. Like somebody could be driving width. Let's say you're driving width and I'm driving depth. You personally sponsor 50 people. So you have 50 people that you've personally sponsored. I have five people that I've personally sponsored, but I've taken those five and I've, I've driven them all 10 levels deep. And so we have the same number of people in our organization. You have 50 people. I have 50 people. We have the same number of people, same volume, same everything. But the only difference is the way we have structured our organization. You brought in more people personally. I only brought in five, but I took those five and created 50 people. So we have this, we have the same number of people in our group. And here's the difference. Width will build wealth, okay? Width will build wealth, but depth will build stability in your team. That's the difference. Write that down. Uh, width will build wealth. Depth will build uh, stability. And the reason why uh, depth will build stability versus um, uh, width building wealth, like think about it. You have 50 people that you personally sponsored. So you're going to make more money than me. You're going to make more money than me because we have, you know, uh, jumpstart bonuses. You get 50% on, on jumpstart bonuses. And so all those people that you brought in, you're going to make more money. You may, you may make three to four times the amount of money that I made, even though we have the same volume, same number of people, same everything. But the difference is my business will be more sustainable than yours. 100%, there's no denying it. My team, like long-term, a year from now, two years from now, three years from now, my team will be here. And maybe those 50 people that you personally sponsored, maybe they're not all here, you know? And so that's the difference is long-term stability is created from driving depth in your organization. And, you know, we always say, you. Uh, you know, you want to create a fire in your team. Well, a fire burns from the bottom up. It doesn't burn. A fire doesn't burn from the top to the bottom. It burns from the bottom up. And so you want to go deep down into your organization and, and create those fires. And that's what creates a long-term long stability. And so, you know, like my mentor always taught me to drive a leg 10 levels deep and it'll never go away. If you can take a leg in your in your unit level and say, okay, this person, you know, is level five or level six, and then you can take that person and drive their leg ten levels deep. That leg is secured. That leg has stability. That leg is going to produce volume. That leg is going to be here for a while. That gives you that gives you like a solid leg to rely on, so that you can rank up in my daily choice and then focus on you know, doing it again in new legs. And so that's why learning this skill is, is so important because I, I can guarantee you there are people deep down in your organization that are probably your very best leaders that you have never met. You don't know them. You've never contacted them. Somebody else brought them into the business and they could be some of your best people. And what you want to do as a leader is grab a hold of those people and start running with them. And so let's talk about some of the, I mean, I, I told you about some of the benefits, but let's talk about some more benefits. Like what's the, what's a big benefit of tap rooting? One is you get paid to do it. Now, this is interesting because like in network marketing, there's a lot of different, there's a lot of different compensation plans. Like every, every compensation plan has like a different structure. Like there's unilevels versus binaries, there's hybrids. And in some plans, you're really rewarded to drive depth. And then in some plans, maybe not so much. Like for instance, in a unilevel, you could be capped at like level seven or level five or level nine or whatever it is. And so if, if you go 20 or 30 levels deep, maybe in that plan, 
you don't get paid as much to to do it. So you know, if there's no incentive to do it, then it does it does make it a little bit harder in some compensation plans. But what you guys need to realize is that the My Daily Choice comp plan rewards you heavily for depth for a few reasons. So one, in our in our check matching program, you can check match up to 10 levels with the exception of master affiliate, which is infinite levels. And so you're you're already able in the compensation plan through check matching to be able to check match 10 levels of people. In jump starts, you're able to get jump starts on 10 levels of people. And then what's even more interesting about the My Daily Choice comp plan is because it's a hybrid of a unilevel and a binary, in a binary, it does not matter what level people are on. Like they could be, they could be level a thousand in your team, and you're still able to earn on all of the volume in your binary. So whether they're level one, level 10, level 50, level 5,000, they're going to contribute to your volume in your binary. And then the other thing that's interesting about the My Daily Choice comp plan is that the way our ranks are, are structured, rank is based on volume. And a lot of other companies, um, rank's not based on volume. It's based on some, in some comp plans, rank is based on how many ranked people are in your team. Like for instance, to hit the top rank, like this is just a theoretical example. Like what if the comp plan was like this? To hit super, you need three people that are 500K. To hit 500K, you need three people that are 250. And so in those plans, um, when people fall out of rank, everybody falls out of rank. Or in some binaries, ranks based on how much volume you're doing in, in just your lesser leg. So you kind of have to focus a significant amount of your, your time and energy on just your lesser leg. Um, but in my daily choice, rank is based on your total volume in your unilevel, in your organization. And so it's not volume in one leg. It's not how many uh, ranked people are under you. And so that means that driving depth is something that it's going to pay you heavily in my daily choice because it can help with your check matching. It can help with your jump starts. It can help increase your binary check and it can help, it can help increase your rank. Uh, as well. And so the, the compensation plan heavily rewards taprooting in my deal, going beyond your level one, going beyond your level two, going deep into your organization. And then another just side note, not a lot of compensation plans have this or do this, but we, we have dynamic compression in my daily choice. And so what that means is when people go inactive and they quit the business, those people compress out of the commissions. And so like, as an example, let's say you're working with somebody uh, who's on your level five and the four people in between you and that person quit. Maybe it's a year from now, maybe it's two years from now, but those people quit. Well, now that level five becomes your level one. So as you're working with people deep down in your, in your organization, over time, it's possible that um, they're gonna become closer to you in the organization. You, you'll get paid more on those people because let, let's face it, it's a, re, it's a reality in network. Not everybody stays, people quit, you know? And it could be a year from now, it could be two years from now. But if you have those relationships with people that are deep down in your organization, then when people quit, you're already working with people deep down in the group. And then like another, like another benefit is if you're working with people deep down in your organization, then people are less likely to quit because they're going to see activity under them. They're going to see momentum under them. They're going to see new people joining in their back office. They're going to see legs blowing up. They're going to see rank advancements happening in, in the, like under the, under their group or in their tree. And so that creates, um, it creates retention. There's, there's a lot of benefits, which we'll, uh, which we'll get into, but that's the first benefit is you get paid to, you get rewarded to. So think about this. The compensation plan in My Daily Choice rewards you to taproot. And most people don't do it. Most people don't contact beyond their level one. Most people don't try to build relationships with people on level seven or level eight. Or le like, to, again, to me, that's, that's crazy. 
because the comp plan pays you to do it. Like if you know that you can get paid up to 10 levels in your team, why aren't you working with everybody from level one to level 10, right? If you know that it's going to pay just in the unilevel part of the comp plan, you can get paid up to 10 levels in the binary, you get paid on everybody. And so you really should be working with everybody in my daily choice because it all contributes to your rank and your binary volume. But just on the unit level side, you still can earn check matching and weekly money up to up to 10 levels. And so to me, it's it's like shocking and it's crazy and it doesn't make sense that a leader would not want to work with people very deep in their organization because that's what's going to drive growth and stability. So this, so that's the first benefit is like literally the comp plan pays you to do it. And we're fortunate in my daily choice because I have been a part of plans where it, it doesn't really make sense to spend a significant amount of my time and energy working with somebody that I'm never going to get paid on. And uh, in my daily choice, you do. And so that's why um, this, again, is so critical. The next thing, number two, the second benefit is you will find your best people deep in your organization. And so there's this saying that you've probably heard before, which is um, every dud knows a stud. Every single person in your organization, I promise you this, uh, there, there is no, no uh, denying this at all. Every single person in your organization knows people better than them. They know people who have more followers on social media. They know people who are better at business. They know people who make more money. Every single person in your group knows people better than them. And for example, when I got into network marketing, I was a dud. You think I just showed up and all of a sudden I was a stud? No way. I was a dud. I was a broke college student. I've never done business before. I never made money in network marketing before. I had zero clue what I was doing. Like I didn't get in and all of a sudden I was like this expert. I had a big team. I had a big network. Like when I got in in 2009, I had zero credibility. I know no, I, I didn't know anybody that like, I didn't know top networkers, but I, I was surrounded by people that were better than me because I wasn't the, I wasn't the best on the block, but you know, I was, I was excited about the potential. I was excited about network marketing. I was excited about what it could do for me, even though uh, I was a dud. And so what happened was the, the person who introduced me to network marketing, he's no longer an MLM. Think about that. I mean, I built a team of 50,000 people in that company. I wound up starting my own network marketing company. We've done a half a billion in sales. The person who introduced me to network marketing is no longer in network marketing. That's, it's kind of crazy to even think about that because that person would have made a lot of money had he have worked with me, had he has stayed, had he been committed, had he been more long-term, but he quit, you know? And so what happens in network marketing is you'll have an upline leader quit. So like in this scenario, when I was a distributor, my upline quit. This was the guy that uh, he was my, my, I was his direct. So he introduced me personally to the business. I signed up under him and that person quit. And so typically what happens in network marketing is like, because I'm, you know, a dud, because I don't have a lot of experience because, you know, um, this guy never worked with me and, and all of these things, I'm automatically going to quit too. Like I'm going to quit. He quit. I don't have a connection with anybody else in the upline. Like I'm out of here. I'm gone. And I was actually, um, I was actually on the verge of quitting. But thankfully, there was somebody in my upline who was taprooting. This guy and his wife, they're trying to identify people that were committed, people that were serious, people that were ready to build the business. And that person was willing to teach me. That person was willing to mentor me. That person was willing to help me with my prospects. And what that did for me is it changed everything. It like, cause again, I was on the verge of quitting my upline quit. And now I'm wondering like, you know, about the company. I think it's the company's fault. I'm not sure. I'm, you know, like I'm 19 years old now. And I'm like, should I just go back to school? And I don't have somebody strong that's grabbing a hold of me saying, Josh, I got you. Like, let's, let's run, let's do this thing until I found, you know, this guy way up in my upline who was willing to take me under his wing. And so 
that saved my network marketing career is somebody that was taprooting that grabbed a hold of me and while i was on my way out the door he got me redirected into doing the right activities so that i could have success in that company and again i wound up creating a team of more than fifty thousand people i was a dud but i turned into a stud because now I could start recruiting a players into my team. I started, I was able to recruit up. I was able to recruit better people into the business because this guy was helping me. He was running with me. And so, and the other benefit of that was I learned a lot, you know, like, so the way you create momentum in your team, as you're taprooting your, your, your team that's deep down is going to learn a lot from you. So I started hanging around him. I started attending three-way calls, Zoom calls, presentations, and I started picking things up about the business that I never knew. I started learning how, like I started learning all of the skills. I started learning all of the selling points. I, like the, the value that I got from working with him, um, you couldn't put a price on it because I never got that before. I never got that from the original guy that got me uh, into network marketing. And so think of it this way. Let's say you're building your team and let's say you have somebody on your level 10. They're on your level 10. And so there's nine people in between you and that person. They're on your level 10. You have nine people in between and all nine of those people quit. And so now the only person that's left is that 10th person. Everybody else in between has quit. This happens all the time in network marketing. And so that 10th person, if you don't get a hold of that person, there's a good chance they're going to quit because they don't have any connection to anybody in their upline. They have zero connection. And so that was like me where I had zero connection. And when you're, when you're in that place um, as an affiliate, um, like you don't know what to do if you're not experienced. And so the easy way out is to just quit. Or sometimes people will blame the company or blame not having a good upline. But if there's somebody like you taprooting you can save that 10th person that that 10th person could be the next super affiliate in my daily choice. And so I have found some of the best people in my organization, 10, 15 and 20 levels deep. Now, sometimes sometimes you get lucky and they could be very close to you. It could be a level one. It could be a level five. It could be a level you know, eight, like it could be within your 10 levels, but sometimes you will find the very best people way down deep uh, in your organization. And when I was building my team of 50,000, many of the people deep down in the organization were the ones hitting the top of the compensation plan. They were the ones hitting the top rank, even though they were real deep down in my group. And had I have not been tap rooting, I would never know who they were. They may have quit. You know, and so I worked personally with all of those people, even though, you know, I didn't make as much money on them because they weren't level one or level two. I worked with all of them as if they were my personals because people in between them had quit. And um, again, this is the best way to drive momentum in your team. So that's really the, the second benefit is you'll find the very best people in your group deep down. And of course, like your level, like, look, I know everybody has a level one. So your level one, uh, just to be like, I probably shouldn't say this, but I'm going to say it anyway. Your level one, like working with your level one is going to be a lot different than working with people deep down in your organization. And I'll, I'll tell you why. Your level one are typically like your friends, your coworkers, people that you know. And those people are gonna treat you differently than people that are very deep in your organization. Because when, you know, uh, this upline, him and his wife, when they reached out to me, you know, I was like super grateful. You know, I was like willing to work. And I was like, oh my God, these guys have a huge organization and they're willing to like pour into me. And sometimes like your level one, of course, they're going to be spoiled. You know, they talk to you all the time. You know, they're, they, they're like always on calls with you, always using you for everything. But people deep down in your organization, they may have never had that support before. And so when you grab a hold of those people, they're like, wow, this guy's like way up in the organization. He's reaching out to me. That does something 
in your group that like it, it's magical once you're doing that uh, in a lot of different legs. It can it can really like change the whole dynamic uh, of your business. And so those are like two of the main benefits is one, you get paid to, and two, you're going to find the very best people uh, in your in your group. Now, the third thing is there are massive positive side effects of doing this. There are side effects, good side effects. And here's what some of the side effects are. The first thing that it's going to do is it's going to fire up your other teams, your other legs. And the way it does that is it creates healthy competition. So think of it this way. You got this, let's say you're, you have your organization. Let's say you have five legs or 10 legs. You have your group. And um, all of a sudden, there's this new leg that you're working with, or it's one of your legs, and you're working with everybody deep down in that organization, and you're starting to crush it. You're, you're doing Zoom calls. There's pictures of you with this new team, like way down deep in your group. You know, there's uh, testimonials coming out of this team. There's rank advancements. There's stories. That fires everyone up. Doesn't matter what team they're on. Like people are inspired by other people having success. And so what's going to happen is your other leaders that have been around maybe for a year or two or, or whatever, your other leaders that have been around in your team, they're going to see that, they're going to witness that, and they're, they're going to start reaching out to you saying, hey, I, I'm ready to get back to work. I'm ready to create some momentum. I'm ready to create a fire in my team. And so that's like one of the like interesting, it's like an interesting side effect of taprooting is it creates this like competition where people want to do the same thing or they're inspired by it and they want to start having uh you know success as well and so you have your other leaders that have maybe they've been in management mode they're just kind of like mentoring and guiding their level one and two they're not really working depth in their group those people all of a sudden are, are going to be like reaching out to you um you know wanting to build and well, i'm doing this right now with a leader uh in in uh the organization um, here locally in Vegas. And it's interesting because, you know, there's people that are like, we're driving this one leg really deep. Um, there's like, you know, six, seven and, and eight levels of multiple seven figures earning like, or multiple seven figures joining this team, like way down deep uh, in this organization. And what's interesting is it's motivating the other legs that are not even related to this leg. Like other leaders are now like, hey, like this is amazing. Like I'm on fire now. Like when can I, uh, you know, do a Zoom call or a launch call? And so that's a really cool side effect of doing this is again, if you want to create a fire, a fire burns from the bottom up. Now, the other cool side effect is it gets people out of management mode and gets them back into recruiting and taprooting. And the reason why that's a side effect, because I, I think I have figured that one out, is people do what they see other people doing. So like when when your team sees all of that happening, you know, they're they're like all of a sudden ready and, and fired up to get after it again. The other thing it does is it creates a um, it creates kind of a contagious energy in your team. Like energy is everything in this business, because if like, I can tell you when there's a T, if you were to compare team A versus team B, let's say it's my team versus your team and my team has high energy and your team has low energy. I'm gonna out earn you, I'm gonna outrank you. I'm gonna put more volume in because my team has higher energy than your team has. If your team's low energy, you know, they're just like not really like loud on social media. They're not really launching people. They're just kind of sitting around and they buy a couple products and they post every now and then. And it's like, hey, get the convention and hey, do the like if my team's high energy and they are on fire, like we're going to outrun you. And so taprooting creates that special, contagious, like fired up energy in your team. And it's it creates this ripple effect. Um, throughout the upline and think of here's another thing think of it this way let's say you start working with that person that's on level 10 right you have the nine people and then your 10th level and you grab a hold of that person and, and you start running with that person and let's say they hit the first rank they hit 1k and then next week they hit 5k now those nine people that are above that 10th person 
you just locked in, you anchored in that whole leg because deep down in the organization, there's a pocket of activity. And now the chances of the people above them quitting are slim to none because who's going to quit when who's going to quit when there's all this activity under them. Now that's not to say that people don't quit or won't quit because people quit no matter what, but um, you, you will keep more people in your group when you're tap rooting uh, deep down in the organization. And so that kind of leads me into, into my next uh, point, which is it, it'll create retention in your business. People start seeing that activity. And when they see that activity, they start to get into action. And then the other, um, there's like two more things that I'll tell you about for, for benefits. And then we'll go into like, what are the steps to tap root? Like, how does it work? Um, what exactly you can do? Um, this one's kind of overlooked, but when you're, when you're tap rooting, um, it can create massive value to your organization. And so like, think of it this way, when you're tap rooting, you're driving depth, you're bringing in new people, you're, you're, you're generating new business. And it could be, it could be so far deep down in your organization where maybe you're not earned, like, let's say it's level 20, you'll earn a lot in the binary, you'll, you'll get the, the rank, you know, benefits and all that stuff. But, but clearly you wouldn't make more money working with that person than a level one, but there's other, there's other value that those people can contribute. Like for instance, those people come in and let's say they start sharing recipes. They start, they start sharing tips. They start sharing things that are working for them. Um, they start posting all their pictures in your team, like your team group or your team chats, you know, that starts again, that starts firing everybody up in your team when those legs uh, start growing and it creates uh, duplication. People deep down in your organization, they start seeing you on Zoom calls. They learn from being around you. Um, you're engaged with them. They learn all the things to say about the company. All of that creates duplication. So those are the reasons why it's so important to learn how to tap root. If you're not doing this right now, like this is all I would focus on is tap rooting, going deep down in your organization. And you're basically, you're trying to identify who the runners are in your team. And so it's kind of a process, right? Like you have to, you know, there's, there's a couple things you have to do. So let's get into that. So step one is you have to reach out. You got to reach out. You got to reach out to your organization. And like, fortunately, in my daily choice, there's a lot of ways to do that. You can go into your contact manager in your back office. The contact manager shows you all your levels. It shows you all of the affiliates in your team. And by the way, um, tap rooting is, is generally with business builders. It like, you don't really want to, you don't really want to contact somebody's personal customers. Like people are definitely more weird about that, where it's like, Hey, don't talk to my customers. Um, so like, I kind of understand that. I don't understand when people are like, Hey, don't contact my team. Don't talk to my team. Like that's ridiculous. Why wouldn't you want your upline helping you drive your organization so you can spend more time building another leg? Like the people that are like, Hey, these are my people don't con like those people don't understand network marketing. They don't understand how it works. They don't understand the game. Cause if they did, they would, they would be like jumping up and down that they have a, that they have an upline that's going to help them drive their organization. But step one is to reach out. So you go into your contact manager. Um, you can export, you can export your downline of affiliates. You can see their phone numbers. You can see their emails. Um, you can use live chat. And really the first step is you have to introduce yourself. And this is what happened to me. Like when, uh, you know, this guy and his wife reached out to me, the first thing they did was they introduced themselves. I had no idea who they were. I had no idea who, like, I didn't know they were at the top of the company. I didn't know what kind of money they, I'd never met them before. I only knew the person that introduced me to the business. So like, for instance, if, if I was reaching out to you, this is just an example. I would say like, Hey, this is Josh. I'm a part of your upline in MDC. I'm a super affiliate. I've been with the company for nine years. It's a pleasure to meet you. That's like the first thing that I would say. Now, the second part of that, which I really like to do is to, is to congratulate or compliment them because people like a lot of times the upline that got them into the business, if that person quit, it's very possible that this person has never gotten any recognition at all from their upline 
as to what they've done in MDC. Maybe they've hit a rank. Maybe they've been on the leaderboard every month. Maybe they're, you know, global bonus pool qualified and they have never got recognition from anybody in your organization. How crazy is that? So you, as the, as the, the person, the leader that's going to tap root, you kind of start off with that. You introduce yourself and you can congratulate them. It's always good to start a conversation off with a compliment and people, trust me, people will perform for compliments. I wanted to perform. I wanted more compliments. I never got a compliment at all. I was the top recruiter every month in, in that company and my upline quit. And I was like, this sucks. Like I brought in all these people, the guy who got me in quit. I've never been recognized for anything. And so when uh, this guy reached out, that was one of the first things he did. He congratulated me for being a top recruiter. He congratulated me on my rank. He congratulated me on my success that I was having so far in the business. And so you can do that as well. Congratulations for hitting the rank of 5K. That's amazing, man. Or, hey, congratulations, I just saw you on the leaderboard. Congratulations, you're binary qualified. You know what? We have all those reports in the back office. They're not there by accident. They're not there just because they're there for you to utilize them. Here's how you utilize them. Go into binary qualified. Start congratulating people that you're taprooting with. Hey, I saw your binary qualified. Congratulations. Hey, I saw you enrolled four people this month and you got shares in the pool. Congratulations. There's tons of ways that you can start the conversation off uh, with a compliment. Now, the, the next step, step two, after you reach out, which is what I like to do, is I like to get to know them. Because it, like, there's, there's a lot of reasons why you want to get to know them, but here are some of the things that I want to know. I want to know how they got started in MDC. I want to know where they're from. I want to know what their background is. I want to know, like, why did they join the business? What's their favorite product? Like, what products have they used? Um, I want to know what their income goal is. I want to know if they're committed, ready to work, how much money they're trying to make. Because part of this process is I, I'm trying to identify if this is somebody I should invest a significant amount of my time and energy into. Because let's be honest, there's only 24 hours in a day. And some of those hours we need to eat, we need to sleep, we need to take a break, we got kids, we got all these things. And so we have to be very selective as where we, as where we spend our time. And so sometimes as you're getting to know people in your team, you're realizing like, okay, this is somebody that, you know, I'm going to invest a lot of time into, or this is somebody that like, they're only here because they want to be part-time. They only want to make 500 to a thousand uh, a month. Like, like that, like maybe somebody isn't, somebody that you want to completely pour into. And so you still support that person. You're still available for, for three-way calls. You're still like, you know, uh, willing to do Zoom calls for them. But you're, I tr you're trying to identify who are the runners, who's the, like, where's the gold in your organization? And so um, cap rooting is not just getting to know who's in your team and building rapport. It's, it's identifying who the studs are or who has the potential to be a stud. And so like, I wasn't a stud, I was a poor college student, but I had like, I had the characteristics of somebody that had potential. I, I had the work ethic. I was willing to like be coachable and follow what the upline said to do. I was willing to put people into the presentation. I was like, I was willing to do everything and I was hungry. I was like hungry, I needed money. I needed like to change my situation. And so, my upline recognized that and poured into me, even though I wasn't, you know, level one to him. There were people in between us uh, that quit. And so um, getting to know your people builds, it builds relationships, it creates a connection, it builds rapport, and it gives you a major insight into your team. So when it comes time to recognize them, you already know them as if they, if you personally enrolled them. You know everything about them. You know their hot buttons. You know why they got in. You know everything about those people. So now you know how to leverage them. You know how to recognize them. You know how to edify them. You know how you know how to do everything because you're taking some time to get to know who these people are. Like, you know, I know that the chat's not live right now. I don't know why, but I bet you if I asked the question, how many people do you know in your organization? Most people would say, I know my level one and my level two. And if I asked you, hey, this person in your group that's level 10, tell me how they got started in MDC. Most leaders would say, I have no idea. 
don't know that person. Even though that person may have just ranked up, they're on the leaderboard every month. You don't even know them. You've never even met them or talked to them. And so getting to know where the activity is and where the momentum is is super important. The, the third thing you're going to do after you introduce yourself, congratulate them, compliment them, get to know them. What are their goals? Like what's going to motivate them to, to really crush this thing? The third thing that I like to do is offer uh, to get into action with them. Now, my goal is not to be a support person in the sense where like I, I've heard leaders say this before where it's like, hey, here's who I am. I introduced myself and it's like, let me know if you have any questions. Let me know if you need me. Let me know if you like, you know, if you ever need something, just reach out. That is not taprooting. Because I've asked leaders before, how are you taprooting? They say that like, hey, I reach out to my team and I tell them like, let, I'm here to support them. Your goal is not just to be a support person. It's to get them into action. How do you get somebody into action? Like people want to know that you're going to be in the trenches with them. The guy who introduced himself to me told me he was going to be in the trenches with me. He told me that he was going to be there on the front line, helping me close all of my prospects. That fired me up more than anything else because I was like, this is what I've been missing. I've been missing somebody that could pour into me, that could be there with me so I can do this thing. I needed that belief to stay in the game. And he was uh, like, he was there at the right time. And so it's, you have to, you have to offer that, hey, you're going to be there with them. And not only, yeah, you're going to support them, but you want to get into action with them. You want to get them paid. You want to get them ranking up. Like, this is like such an important conversation to have in MDC, especially like this is a leadership call. Like, this is something that, again, most people are not doing. And if you do this, it'll change everything in your business. So in MDC, if I was doing this, I would have a couple goals. And here are my goals. One, I want to get them to do 10 and two. You can watch my first training where we talk about 10 and two. Why do I want them to do 10 and two? Because if they do 10 and two, they're going to put $760 in their pocket. It's going to be a success story. They're going to hit the first rank. They're going to be in profit. And so I want to help them get to 10 and two or get a paycheck in their pocket as quickly as possible. That's how you create a fire going deep down in your organization, taking somebody level 10, level 15, level 20, taking that person and helping them get paid quickly. That is going to fire everybody else uh, up through the chain. And then like my next goal is I want to talk to the people that they know. I want to know their network. I want to talk to the people that they're connected to because again, remember the most valuable asset to your business is the people that your team knows that that have not yet been introduced to the business. That's the value that your team has. Your, your value in your organization, the most valuable asset are those people, those networks, all the friends, all the family, all the connections, all the people that they know that could be rock stars in your team, right? So you, you want to talk to the people uh, that they know. Now, for the people that already have a team growing, because they're like this, if it's a new person, maybe your goal is really to get them to 10 and two. But in some cases for like bigger leaders, like if you're already a, a 100K affiliate or 250K affiliate, there may be people deep down in your organization that they already have a team. So in that case, I really want to get to know their team as well. Like, hey, introduce me to your team. I want to meet your top leaders. I want to see what everybody's doing. I want to make sure that you guys are on track. And so the, I start to dig into their organization to see, like, what are they doing to have success? Like, what's going on? What are they doing? Do they have a team call? Like, are they doing a weekly call? Like, I want to know everything about what their team's doing. I want to meet the leaders. And then when I meet those leaders, I want those leaders to introduce me to their leaders. I want those leaders to introduce me to their leaders and so on. And I want to meet all of the top prospects of everybody. Everybody in that group, I want to meet all of the top prospects. And so I say that a lot when I'm working with people is introduce me to your top prospects. Like you've been working in the business. I'm sure you have some, some top prospects that you'd love to get into My Daily Choice. Can you introduce me to those top people so I can help you get them in the business and get you a quick paycheck? And so imagine, imagine this. There are leaders in your group 
that are already duplicating under you and you have never met them yet. Those are people that you need to get connected to immediately because that's where the gold is in your group. That's where the super affiliates, the master affiliates, the 100Ks, the, you will break the most ranks from people that are deep in your organization. So you've got to get a hold of those people quickly. And again, you can use this, introduce me to your top prospects. I want to meet your team. And that's how you can start to get connected into what's going on in that organization. And then really the last step is you want to plug those people in. Because again, those people may only have a connection to the person that introduced them. They may not even have a connection to the company yet. They may not have a connection to the company. And so you want them to have a connection to you, but you also want them to have a connection to the company. So you want to plug them in to where the company announcements are, events. You want to get them to convention. You want to get them to a mastermind. You want to get them to any other events that are happening. You want to plug them into live streams, opportunity presentations, weekly training calls, or weekly opportunity calls that your team's doing. You want to plug those people in. So now those people not only feel like they have the support from you, um, but they're like, hey, I got somebody that's willing to run with me. And now you've just added them kind of into your community, into your network, where now the company, because we do like we put lots of announcements out there. We do daily deals. We promote convention. And a lot of people aren't plugged into that because the person who, who introduced them quit never told them where to go, never told them how to get, you know, like all set up and how to, you know, be set up for success. And so you have to do that as the, the upline that's way up. That's part of like, that's part of the process is getting those people uh, plugged in. And so just some last tips um, is again, use the reports and the insights to get the data that you need to start tap rooting. All of that's available in your My Daily Choice back office. So you can, um, you can go into the contact manager, you can go into uh, your Unilevel list, like you can export all of that data so that you can, you can go to work. Um, so use the reports and insights that you have available to you in, in order to tap root. Because uh, in a lot of companies, um, and this was actually Jen's idea, but in a lot of companies, they don't even give you the phone numbers and emails of people that are below level one. So it makes it harder for the upline to tap root, but we give you all of that data. You can export through your contact manager and you could call somebody on your level nine. You could call somebody on your level 10. And so you need to use the, the reports and insights um, that are available to you. And then time management. Time management is a critical thing. You have to know where to spend your time because again, you know, there's only so many hours in a day that you have and you need to know where you're going to spend your time. So like if you're really ripping it in a leg and you're like already 10 levels deep and you have six figure earners and seven figure earners and celebrities and influencers and like this leg is like doing millions per month now, like that's the easy leg to work on. That's an easy leg to tap root, right? Because you have all of this activity and a lot of leaders will fall into that trap and then they're one legged. They're one legged because they're spending all their time on the leg that's already blowing up. And what I would recommend is get a leg to that point, but be careful where you spend your time because if you have a leg like that that's already ripping, then you're one you're like you're going to want to go to another leg that maybe only has 5,000 in volume or 10,000 in volume and start working that leg. So you have to you have to know you know like when to tap root a certain leg and then when to shift your focus and spend more time and energy on other leaders in different legs so like if i had a leg that was doing like a million a month in volume i'm still going to support that team i'm still going to be available for presentations for three way calls and things like that but i'm going to spend a significant amount of time and energy on a smaller leg because in, in, the, in the My Daily Choice comp plan, to rank up to super affiliate, you need two legs. You know, two legs in your Unilevel to rank up to super. And master, you need five legs. So I'm going to, like, if I have one leg that's already blown up, I need to find four other legs that I can tap root to hit the top of the, of, of the comp plan. And so um, that's something that, that's really critical is, you know, like, make sure you 
are you don't fall into the trap of you're working only with the easy team that's blowing up and you're not and you just like ignore all your other legs that need to be tap rooted. Um, so so that's the first thing. And then the second thing, I don't know if I mentioned this at the beginning of the call. There's this weird thing where people are like, don't contact my people. Like those are my people. And I will say that there there are certain times and scenarios where an upline leader could be stepping on other leaders toes like that that does happen and you have to like have really good judgment as to what's going on in your team like if there's if there's a leader that's doing an incredible job with their organization and they are already tap rooting and that leg's growing like i'm not going to go in there and try to disrupt everything that's that's happening cuz what they're doing is working they're already creating success. They're already creating volume. They're already creating, you know, rank up stories. And so um, if I am working with certain people in that team, what I like to do is, is inform the leader as to what's going on, because I don't want that leader thinking I'm trying to take over their whole organization, but it actually, if you do this right, it can create a bigger fire in your group. So like, for instance, if I'm working in that leg, I could tell the leader, hey, listen, I don't know if you know this, but, you know, I made contact with uh, Robert. He's four levels deep to you, but he's already put me on the phone with three prospects. I'm going to help you blow this leg up. Like, that's how I would position it as the upline, because I want the leader to know that I, there's activity happening in this leg. I'm working with these people. And so um, that's something you can do with your leaders to let them know, hey, I'm working with these people in your team. They've already put me on the phone with people. We're going to blow it up. And now you need like three more legs so that you can hit the top or you need another leg of volume so you can hit the top of the pay plan. And so um, that's really important because again, you don't like, like with customers, I understand like people are really weird about you talking to their, their personal customers, but people are also weird about you talking to their team because they don't understand the value of tap rooting. So sometimes you need to explain that to your leaders, like, hey, this is a good thing for your business that people are reaching out to me and I can run with them, work with them and help you build your paycheck, build your volume, build your rank. Like sometimes you need to have that conversation um, with your leaders. And then really the last tip guys is you need to follow up, okay? So as you're tap rooting, like sometimes you're not gonna get uh, them to make an introduction right away. You know, you need to follow up uh, with those people because remember, some of these people may be brand new. Um, they're maybe not as serious as as other leaders in your team. Um, you know, maybe they don't, um, I don't know, maybe they haven't been in the business for a long time. So it takes sometimes a little time for some people to get going, but you need to follow up. And your goal out of this whole thing is really to get them to make an introduction. That's what you're like. Out of all the things I said, that's what you're really trying to do is you're trying to find those people and get them to make an introduction, like have them send somebody into the opportunity presentation and make an introduction to you because that's how you're going to create um, all these pockets of, of activity and growth. So uh, again, guys, I don't want to go over on time, um, but these are the steps. You have to reach out. you got to get to know them. You have to offer to get into action with them. You've got to plug them in and you have to know your goals. Your goals are to get them to 10 and two. Your goals are to get them to the first rank. Your goals are to get them into profit because that's how you create success stories. That's how you create activity. That's how your team goes viral. That's how, like, that's how you create momentum. If you want to create a fire in your group, this is what you have to learn. It's tap rooting. It is the best skill um, for a professional network marketer. If you want to be a super affiliate, a master affiliate in the company, this is like one of the most important um, skills because as we talked about, there's massive benefits, right? There's all the positive side effects that we talked about. You're going to find the best people in your team. You're going to create retention. You get paid to do this. And so please get this video out to everybody in your organization so they can learn tap rooting. It's the most valuable asset to your business that most people aren't doing. And I promise you, if you apply what you learned in this training, it will change everything in your team. So thank you guys so much for, for tuning in this video and I'll see you guys all at the top. Thanks. Bye-bye.